a Timex. A big one. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Sweet. The week on it, so. I do need a watch, so. No, it's nice. And it's engraved with I, or, uh, the ones I saw. Oh, really? I don't know what, don't know what they do. Anymore. Oh, that's exciting. So if you guys want to get started, it's up to you guys. Okay. All right, cool. Everybody looks to me to ask. <laughs> what are, what are going your first? thoughts on being named and a player of the week? Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, obviously, it's been kind of an up and down year. Um, so to kind of put it all together for one week and um, and have that kind of series against uh, both Pittsburgh and against Detroit um, was definitely nice to kind of see all the hard work pay off. The timing of it especially good, given where you guys are at in the standings and kind of the race down the stretch here? Yeah, yeah, we know that we kind of need to get things going um, if we want to have a chance to make playoffs. And, and obviously this is a big series coming up against the Reds, and this is one of the teams that uh, we need to chase down to uh, to sneak into the playoff hunt. So hopefully we can uh, I, hopefully I can keep up the, that momentum going into this series. When uh, there's a shuffle that, that moved Dylan into leadoff for a little bit, and then when he got hurt and you reclaimed it, is, did that feel like a return maybe to normalcy a little bit or some kind of, I don't know, was there anything there that maybe jumps you into, into a, like a hot stretch when that happens? Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily where I was hitting in the lineup. I think it just more had to do with uh, my swing feeling a little bit better, um, both mechanically and also just having a better approach. Um, and maybe it did have something to do with, uh, with me just trying to get on base as often as I could and, and kind of not trying to do too much. Um, so. Fortunately, I, I kind of jumped right back into that leadoff role and, and have been getting on base a bunch. I wonder if the second time of being at leadoff was different for you, not just the results, but going back there, having had the extended experience, if, if maybe you did do something, even tweak something a little bit with how you approached it. Yeah, I, I don't think it was necessarily uh, being more comfortable there, mm -hmm. um, just because I've hit leadoff so much yeah. uh, in my life. I think it's just more getting more comfortable as the year has gone on. My swing has kind of felt better and better. Um, and just being a little bit better from the mental side as well. What, what, what part of that, like just as far as how prepped you are for each game or what do you mean by the mental um, side? I don't think it's necessarily uh, how prepped I am, but kind of just having a, a better general idea of pitches I'm looking for in, um, in specific scenarios and specific counts. So I think it's, um, not necessarily, because I think early on in the season, I think I was doing just as good a job of preparation and yeah. and uh, doing all the research that I could. Um, but I think it's just as I get more and more knowledge and become more comfortable with what's been, what teams are doing to me, I think I have a better idea. When you move into that leadoff spot in spring, I mean, you kind of have like, all right, do I make leadoff like me, or do I make myself like I think a leadoff hitter has to be, like grinding counts and you know the stereotypical leadoff. It, it seems like you found a, a happy medium as to how to be you in the leadoff spot. Is that a good description, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that um, definitely the second time that I've been hitting leadoff, I've been doing a, a better job of what you might expect a, a prototypical leadoff guy to be doing, is kind of working those counts a little bit while still maintaining that aggressive approach that I think has made me successful up to yeah. this point. Um, so yeah, kind of like you're saying, it's finding a, a, a balance between those two. Would you, uh, would you like to lead the National League in steals? I would I would love to. That would be great. You know, but, I mean, you know you could, right? Like, there, it, like you're in it. Yeah, I know. I knew yeah. I was kind of up there. I wasn't sure how many of the most, uh, however the most had. But yeah, that would be a pretty cool opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be, that'd be yeah. I, I don't, I, I was looking at it, you don't normally see like 20, like 20s isn't like one that like, and you got twice as many as anybody yeah, else yeah. on your, in the division. Yeah, fortunately you don't have guys like Ricky Henderson who are <laughs> stealing 100 bases in a year anymore. Yeah. So. You don't need quite as many. Because that's been part of this streak, too. I mean, more times on base, more chances to do. I know part of a double steal, but two steals in there. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, the opportunity is there to pull for you. Exactly, yeah. More times you're on base, the more chances you have to steal. Yeah. Sure. You mentioned the other day that you felt a thing in your right-handed swing that might have unlocked part of your left-handed swing. How much do your swings mirror each other when they're going right? Like, is it as simple as your righty should look like your lefty, or how, how much is the difference there? Um, it's... I wouldn't say they necessarily mirror each other. Um, there are certain uh, aspects that I think are important for any any swing, um, and there's sometimes where I'm, I'm doing those things better righty versus lefty, and there's certain cues that I take from each side of the plate um, that I can uh, kind of move to the other side as well that, that will help out, but I think 
the, the fundamentals, obviously, like the very basics of the swing are, are going to be the same from both sides, but it's kind of the way that I get there is a little bit different. Is it, is it timing? Is it like load, weight shift? Like what are those cues that you look for? Yeah, part of it is timing. Part of it is just uh, kind of where I start um, with in terms of kind of preloading, I guess, and, and uh, being on my backside and kind of, kind of staying there as opposed to kind of losing that back hip in my load. Um, and a big part of that is timing, just making sure I'm starting on time so I'm not rushed and, and uh, do things with my body that I know I'm, I uh, don't need to if I I'm, if I'm, want to have a good swing. Yeah. Sorry I'm late, but how much enjoy, how enjoyable is this, this honor, when you, your club is in the middle of a pennant race? Yeah, obviously the timing is, is huge. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do too much of the play, just the kind of the approach that we've taken as a team or, or have been trying to take as a team is treating every game like a playoff game. So it's not necessarily focusing on those stats as much, but it's just more trying to focus on how we can win each individual a day. And um, I think having that mental approach kind of helps you uh, move on from each at bat, whether or not you, you've had success recently. Do you think at any point in the last week when you've been putting up these numbers, you've had a, an at bat where maybe it didn't result in a hit, home run, double, whatever, but you did the right thing fundamentally that makes you feel happy about what you're doing? Yeah, I think, I think me personally, I don't get too upset if I have a good at bat and it doesn't necessarily uh, turn out the way I, I hoped it to. For example, if I line out and hit the ball really hard, then I won't get as mad as if I have a a bat at bat um, and pop up and get myself out or something like that. So it's it's more of just the uh, the approach that I have and, and if I execute that well then I'll be happy regardless because I know there's certain things in the game that you can't control. Congrats. Thank you. With you and Paul Goldschmidt hitting as well as you guys are lately, how important is it for you two to set the tone for the lineup, especially for this series? Yeah, I mean it's it's been fun to hit in front of Goldie and I honestly that's probably a big part of why I, I got the award this past week is because guys don't want to face um, Goldie with uh, with me on base. They're giving me a lot of good pitches to hit. So I, I do owe a lot of my recent success to how well Goldie's been hitting for sure. And um, I know with, with how often we've been getting on base, given the, given the guys behind um, us a chance to drive us in. So we're just trying to keep that going, keep that rolling into this series and uh, the rest of the year. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. All good? Okay. Thanks, guys.